The following is an edited recording from a live video broadcast. Image and audio quality may vary. All right. So here's a question for you, fans. Who was Anakin's father? Now, I had theories about this 20-something years ago, okay? Uh, of course, it's never been covered off. So in the story, of course, uh, Qui-Gon catches up with um, Shmi. Shmi just says, uh, yeah, there was no father. It's the, what do you call it? The, oh, what do you call it? The, something like the birth of the Jesus Christ scenario where it just appears out of nowhere. Um, and that was it. I just dropped it after that. And, of course, well, that was complete tripe, right? But there are certain hints along the way through the entire saga as to who the father might be. Now, it's never been clarified. It's never been confirmed. But I had my theories, and I'm sticking with my theories until someone tells me otherwise. And they kind of have, but I don't care. I'm, this is the DAG theory, right? Um, Anakin is Jar Jar's love child. No, I don't think so. Uh, who provided the tag? Who, do you, who provided the tadpole? No, none of that. Immac Thank you, Chris. The Immaculate Conception, exactly right. So it had been hinted. This is why I love the, the prequel trilogy, right? They cover all this detail. And if you look past Annika, um, some Hayden Christensen's sort of poor acting and some of the really dodgy dialogue, there's some really, really good stuff there. The key thing is, and I thought, oh, my God, what I suspected was completely true. Get to Revenge of the Sith and the line, Darth Plagueis was a dark lord of the Sith who could use the Force to influence the midichlorians to create life. Now, of course, people crack the shits when the midichlorians were first announced in the Phantom Menace. Oh, my God, the Force is not a biological thing. It's a mystical thing, right? And, of course, everybody, if you remember back in 1999, went up in arms over this. Uh, and I thought, hang on, but when you get to the later movie, it actually makes sense as to what's going on. So there is nothing to say at all that either Darth Sidious or Darth Plagueis actually use the funky did the, the funky mojo if you will on shmi skywalker to create anakin and that's the reason why did do that intentionally because he was to be the, the future dark side of the force um sith lord right and it just made so much sense to me i thought well yeah of course and the key thing to remember is that anakin was not born on tatooine and if you look at shmi skywalker's backstory she was shifted from planet to planet here there and everywhere before she ended up on tatooine because anakin um, was three years old when he first arrived because he actually says in the movie uh, when um, Padme asked me, how long have you been here? And he says, since three, I think. So where was he for the previous three years? They could have been anywhere. So she, he was not born on Tatooine. That's actually quite important. Um, the midichlorians increase the sensitivity to the force, which is fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. What I'm saying is that based on that one bit of dialogue where Plagueis create influence the midi chlorines to create life what's to say he didn't create it in space skywalker and she was picked for a reason okay they didn't just pick some random person she was picked for a reason now the irony is of course that with shmi we know nothing about it like zero right she is a skywalker and luke says in jedi that luke the force runs strong in my family and he says i have it my sister has it, my father has it, right doesn't say anything about the grandmother right it's a grandmother isn't it yeah and what about Shmi? And what about her parents? And what about her siblings? Right? It's just not covered off at all. And why is she a Skywalker? Is she a Skywalker by marriage or by birth? And none of that is touched on anywhere, right, in any canon source whatsoever. So who's to say that if you go back far enough that um, she's got, she got really, really strong Force connections? And, of course, if you want to take it a step further, when Yoda says in The Empire Strikes Back, uh, when Luke is flying off, oh, that boy's our last hope, and Yoda says, no, there is another – I originally thought, you know, looking at it in hindsight many decades later, oh, maybe it's a sibling of Shmi, Shmi's brother, Shmi's cousin, uncle, whatever, because she would have to have connections with the Force as well. So it was just one of those things. You could delve really right into it in a big way, and they did subtly touch on it in one of the comics, um, which um, I thought was kind of groovy to say that um, Padme, not Padme, Palpatine, or uh, Plagueis was involved with the birth. But it just made complete sense. There was no father. Therefore, the Immaculate Conception started how Darth Plagueis can create life. Two and two together, bang. Anakin's born, he ends up becoming Darth Vader, uh, the ultimate Sith Lord. Bang. All too easy. See? Simple as that. How hard could that be, kids? Uh, uh, comparable to the Quizat Tatarak. Uh, yes, actually, yes, yeah, exactly what it is. It's done by design. And we took it a step further, and we even suggested that maybe um palpatine was aware of shmi because having the, the kid anakin and made a point of ensuring she stayed on tatooine kept her as a slave said okay you guys look after her don't mistreat her because she's clearly not mistreated in the movie got her own hut and all the rest of it just look after her because she's got a very very important kid you can really stretch this out if you want and but the the logic works that's the key thing about it so